Hi friends and welcome to Holy Green. A herpetologist and a nature lover, Sandeep Das is our guest for the day. Sandeep is the recipient of the Edge Hero Award from the Zoological Society of London and also an Edge Fellow from 2017 for his work with Purple Frogs. Last year, he received the second prize to Sanctuary Asia Wildlife Photography Awards. Lot more recogni recognitions to be mentioned, which we will talk as the conversation goes along. He is currently working with the Kerala Forest Research Institute and has done his PhD and currently working there as a research scholar. Sandeep has been part of many research teams discovering new amphibian and reptilian species. Welcome Sandeep to Uli Green. Thank you, Abhijita. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, to begin with, can you give us an insight into how you developed this love for nature and animals from a very young age? And also, what is the trigger for you to get into this field of herpetology? Yeah, so, uh, uh, I mean, like from a very young age, I was very fond of animals uh, and, and, and I always wanted to have pets. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, it didn't happen because my father, uh, he has this idea of not keeping any animals in captivity. Okay. So it was uh, when I cleared my 10th exam, when I passed my 10th exam uh, with some marks that my family didn't ex expect uh, <laughs> I pitched this idea and I said like I would love to have an aquarium and like that said yes and I got my first aquarium my like grand, uh, grand grandfather and my uncles they bought me an aquarium so that was the first pet I had so I always had this interest of in uh, like uh, keeping fishes and other animals I love dogs cats and everything but like it didn't happen at that point of time and it is during like after my plus two during my degree years i started this uh, bird washing and i got opportunity to be part of several surveys through um, dr nami dr isa and all and we went to a lot of forests like started bird watching and i i am from trishur and trishur has this vast coal fields like agricultural coal fields uh, around and it's just a couple of kilometers from my place and i used to frequent those places for uh, majorly for wetland birds migratory birds and all and like it was during that period uh, i took up photography and photography again was was initially a tool for me to record what i was seeing and at, it is at that moment when i was doing my post graduation uh, from Faru College Calicut, uh, I met Dr. An An Anil Sakriya. So he uh, is a veterinary surgeon by profession and he was working on frogs and he's the one who introduced me into the world of frogs. And working in, 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 in our forest, like filled with all these wildlife, including elephants, tigers and all these animals, and working in all, in, in all those forests at night was something really adventurous for me at that point of time. So that was one trigger and at the same time it, it was at that moment I realized that like there are a lot more amazing animals uh, among amphibians. Otherwise like as someone from a city uh, we are always or we are mostly familiar with the common toads or the commonest frogs that are here and everyone has this say like I don't know how to call it slightly like an eerie feeling or or a yucky feeling towards these animals. But the fact that, like, seeing them in the wild uh, and, like, all those amazing, colorful amphibians just changed my whole perspective. And since then, I've been working on amphibians and along the way, reptiles, basically snakes. They are the predators of amphibians. And whenever I do field work, whenever I go, go to forest looking for frogs, I started seeing a lot of snakes too. So... That way, is, like both of them are connected, and that's how I got into this field. And yeah, I've been working on them for the last 10, 11 years. Yeah. No, uh, uh, that's that's an interesting story. Picking up this uh, particular th thing, but then herpetology is a term which we're not really familiar with. Who's a herpetologist, and what what are, what do they do, and what are the career options for a herpetologist? So a uh, herpetologist uh, is someone who studies herps or herpetofauna, which simply means amphibians and reptiles. And 
as as a career option you can always uh, be part of research working on all these animals you can uh, involved in teaching and when we say research there are a hell lot of opportunity in the research field itself when we say herpetology there are a lot of avenues you can work on the taxonomy like describing new species you can work on the biology you can work on the ecology you can work towards the conservation so it's all connected and there are a lot of opportunities in this particular field how is it how is it helpful for a for the common man herpetology uh i mean like uh, herpetology as in it's, it's it's again like when we talk about amphibians or reptiles they're all part of this ecosystem when we specifically look at uh, amphibians they are nature's one of the best insect control agents and similarly when we look at reptiles they are an integral part of the food chain they act as a predator as well as they act as a prey too so like conserving them is uh, very much significant towards the conservation of biodiversity so uh, that is something we are pitching in towards the common man trying to get these animals popular uh, like trying to create awareness as much as possible to understand uh, the value of conserving them okay when when i was uh... Talk, I mean, when I first started hearing about you, your name was always referred to as Santi Purple Frogs. That was the that was the name that came. I mean, the Purple Frogs name was always tagged with your name. Let's uh, can you throw some light on this species, their speciality, and about your studies and recommendations about this Purple Frogs? Yeah. So uh, I'll, I'll start from the beginning. So in it was in two thousand three. this species was discovered from idiki by uh, dr sd biju uh, he is a malayali along with his supervisor dr franky bosu so both of them discovered the species and they introduced the species to the scientific world and that discovery was something that created a lot of uh, a lot of interest in the amphibian field uh, because it was a very unique discovery because of couple of things one their closest relatives are in the islands of seychelles a group of frogs called zooglossids uh, and like imagine a frog having a relative some 2500 to 3000 km away from from our place so amph- amph- amphibians they can't tolerate salinity so uh, the issue is they can't cross the seas like so the connection between the animals in the uh, seashells and the purple frog is something very unique which is which makes them a living fossil which makes them a living evidence proving india was part of africa the gondwana land hypothesis was uh, 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 i mean it's a living evidence for the gondwana land hypothesis so that way it is very unique uh, in its evolutionary significance and another thing is that like it lives underground and it comes above ground only for a day in india which is also very unique so uh, it was in 2010 uh, with dr anil sakriya and team uh, we studied this biology for the first time uh, it was then we realized that like they come above ground uh, for a certain period they lay their eggs and all these kind of uh, activities their biology was it is in, uh, was studied in 2010 and from 2010 onwards until this year like this year also like we've been studying them i was in field for the last um, one or two weeks uh, chasing the purple frog or chasing the monsoon uh, as we would call it so the thing is a frog sitting under ground coming above ground only for a day and understanding our weather pattern which is like what is happening above ground sitting under ground is still a mystery so the last 10 years we had been studying different ecological aspects of the frog at the same time i've been trying to with my team of course uh, we've been trying to create as much as awareness as possible towards the conservation of the species like when we said it is very unique or uh, it is evolutionarily significant or it is globally endangered uh, there is no use uh, if there is no conservation effort is put in and there is no use if common people doesn't know about it the thing is like the animal is uh, very popular in the area they are found for example if you if you if you take idiki where they were described where they were first found if we go to areas where they are found the, the people living 
in that vicinity they knows this animal they know when they come above ground they know when they go underground they know where their tadpoles are all these things but our policy makers or the people who are protecting them or people who who should be conserving them they might not be aware of this this situation it was in 2016 uh, while i was attending a conservation leadership course in madagascar the key speaker was um, patricia right she is a lemur conservationist uh, who is an american and based in madagascar who had, who had done a lot of conservation on lemurs so the key point of her inaugural uh, session or inaugural talk was that in order to conserve a species the species should be known to the general public to the policy makers and everyone that's when uh, I, i i started thinking like when we go somewhere like if we go to idki and talk about the species yeah people might know it but if we go to trivandrum or if we go to thrissur or if we go to a city and talk about a species what it is that's that's the general attitude and that's when i started thinking about how to get how to create a connectivity with the species because we 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 have a lot of conservation efforts happening uh like the most of them revolving around our larger animals elephants tigers obviously there are a lot of reasons uh for that particular thing because they are umbrella species by conservation conserving a tiger we are conserving a lot of habitat ecosystem animals and all but at the same time i realized that like very less attention uh, uh is on smaller animals say amphibians or fishes or whatever like uh, unlike other larger mammals uh, these okay. animals like maybe like to some extent birds also gets get some attention but not these animals and that's when i thought okay so to create that connection we should have a story and it was at that moment i realized okay an animal that is coming above ground only for a day why 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 shouldn't i connect it why why can't we connect it with our mahabali and we started campaigns in 2017 from 2017 on onwards we started releasing posters and wherever and whenever we wrote an article or popular things on purple frog we started calling it mahabali frog and then there is that inter- like the interest among people or oh, what is this what is the story about this what is this mahabali frog then we'll say that like okay this is an animal that comes above ground only for a day in a year just like our mahabali and that made a real connection so in 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 2016 17 and all when we go for a talk if there are like 100 people there will be just like five or six people who are uh, aware of the species but now the situation is different like at least more than uh say 60% of the total uh, people who are present knows the species thanks to all the medias and all these things which made it why that was one thing and secondly there was another thing which really gave up a lot of boost to the species uh, so it was in 2019 kerala government uh, the state wildlife advisory board declared the uh, buddha peacock as the uh, state butterfly again it, it kind of uh, like gave a thought to me why not a state amphibian we have a state bird state <coughs> animal uh, state butterfly uh, all these things why not a state amphibian and that's when i wrote a proposal uh, like detailing all these connections it's a unique animal it's a living fossil uh, it uh, is having this evolutionary connection and also like a story a connection to our mahabali story or onam festival so all these with all these things i made a proposal and i submitted to the kerala forest department some of our ministers and the wildlife advisory board from there uh, some of the media took it up and they uh, <laughs> made it viral uh, saying that this is a possible uh, proposal that is happening in fact some media has actually gave reports as this is declared as a state frog which is not it is yet to be taken up hopefully some day soon because that's in the wildlife advisory board agenda is what i understood so that 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 movement that initiative also gained a lot of attention towards the animal so now people know okay mahabali frog or purple frog species nasega patraka sakhyatanus this is something unique it is something that comes above ground only for a day so yeah i i believe that these kind of uh, initiatives is really important in conserving a species now that if we propose something if we propose a conservation action or if we propose something uh, to the policy makers there will be support from the general public too or at least the policy makers will also be aware of these kind of animals that are living around us then you mentioned that it comes up only once in one one day in a year and yeah. uh, when you managed to click a photograph of that how did that happen uh 
so it was only the first time uh, that uh, that was difficult for the last 10 years i have been uh, seeing them every year on that single day oh. like it's the same day every year no 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 it is totally different it it it, it depends upon a uh, lot of character variables uh, the temperature the rainfall the conditions in that habitat uh, the like duration of the rainfall uh, and the amount of rainfall uh, they are calling activity all these has to be connected so it took us like 3 4 years to get that connection and now like uh, I, i i mean i can proudly say that uh, i can actually predict like what day they are coming above ground and most of the time it was right uh, other than like one or two years when the climate was totally different so this is one animal which is directly going to be affected because of the change in climate so i'll i'll, I'll tell you one one brief part of their life cycle so uh, once they come above ground and once they lay their eggs in the streams so they lay in eggs in streams which dry up in summer and gets rejuvenates in the first shower Okay. so when when it gets rejuvenated in the first hour there are very less competition there are very less number of uh, predators uh, so they are kind of avoiding uh, competition and predators and what happens is after the eggs are laid it takes around 7 days for them to hatch out into tadpoles and these tadpoles are just like our sucker fish they are highly sucktorial they can suck onto those rocks and hold on to fast flowing torrents Okay. so what happens is like sitting underground they know that it's going to rain heavily in 7 days because if it's not, not going to rain all these pools will get dried up and if it rains early these eggs can get washed up washed off okay so 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 what happened is like in one year it rain after two days and all the eggs get washed off like a lot of them got lost but still some managed to survive but in two years what happened is it rained after 10 15 days say for example in 2021 uh what happened is uh, not 2021 22 2000 uh, 2020 it rained after 18 days by then all those pools dried up and almost all of or not almost all the eggs got lost so so this is some one animal which is evolving or which is living along with a monsoon so there is this is some this is one animal which is going to be directly affected by the change in climate okay and and, and that's that's where i mentioned like it's still a mystery sitting underground without even coming above ground they know that it's going to rain in 7 days that's, okay. that's that's something amazing and and when when i say like they come out in only in uh, only for for a day it's actually a couple of hours and that can vary within uh, with with different habitats say for example if if they breed uh, if they come out uh, like today in idiki it might be happening at a different day in another habitat say silent valley or niliampathi or periya like that so it depends upon the weather parameters and the atmospheric conditions and the geography all the stream and everything in in their habitat so it's present in most of the uh, districts of kerala yes yes so starting from the uh, from from uh, north of shangota gap and up to uh, wayanad they are found oh i see okay now other than purple frogs what are the other species that you studied your memorable experience as a herpetologist uh, i mean there are there, there are a lot of uh, species in our western ghats which are really beautiful and amazing so another uh, really interesting uh, thing that uh, i i always tell is is uh, the discovery of a new species of snake from ervikulam national park the name is silophis mosaicus uh, we call animalay woods uh, we call it animalay wood snake so while while i started my work in ervikulam that was in 2050 uh, so our field work is mostly in the evenings we started by around 6 7 in the evening and it can go up to like 1 2 in the morning we come back and like we'll we'll sleep of, of the day and again after uh, afternoon we'll uh, yeah, go to that place just just to make sure that there are no larger wildlife uh, where we are working before it gets dark 
so uh, it was in 2015 uh, like after a long day uh, in the morning we went took a dip in the stream and uh, came back and we were sleeping uh, outside the uh, camp anti poaching camp and there is a trench and in the middle of my sleep uh, sleep i i woke up and i was going out to take a leak and i found the snake in a hole and uh, the moment we saw it uh, we realized that okay this is uh, something interesting this is something we have in see and then uh, i i managed to uh, speak to uh, one of my seniors uh, who is working uh, who has a lot of knowledge in uh, snakes I spoke to him and like i managed to share him a photograph from the field and he said like okay this is you know we knew and that was in 2015 we had necessary permits I spoke to my pi dr isa and like our project investigator dr sridhar spoke to them and we collected it and then we started the work it was in 2015 and it took us almost 5 years uh, to look all the specimens that are in the natural history museum london then some other museum then the bnhs museum said as a museum and all we compared a lot we did a lot of uh, morphological study we also did some of the genetic work and finally we published it Uh, during the first lockdown that was in 2020 and and, and uh, yeah like uh, during the course of time we saw it again a couple of times in the national park and outside the national park as well so that is something <laughs> really amazing okay now other than all this uh, passion on herpetology you are also a, a a very good photographer you are the winner of kerala state wildlife photographer of the year a year award in 2019 from kerala forest and wildlife department this is for a particular photograph that you had taken uh, can you give us a brief on this particular photograph that flower and the fly fly coming on top of it yeah uh, just like what we discussed initially when i when we started the show so uh, initially for me photography uh, was was a tool to record what i'm seeing in the field and i took a photography while i was working on birds and ravin p mohandas is is a photographer i consider myself as my mentor because i learned photography watching him and uh, for the last couple of years say from 2010 on, onwards i have been mostly focusing on the macro aspect generally on amphibians and reptiles and i uh, like uh, pravin always used to say uh, i always used to go through uh, images of uh, legendary photographers and try to see and try to try to like, create that uniqueness or try to bring out new perspective like uh, always try to uh, capture things uh, that are not seen it is almost impossible but again i always try to do that like what can i do rather than taking a normal portrait shot so uh, again in 2016 uh, with with some of my friends in calicut we we call ourselves calicut bird club uh, there are a lot of friends including satyamaj vinidan and apilaj and all these friends abhi uh, uh, yeah. all already get yeah. an interview so uh, we all planned to get together and we were all uh, going to um, masanagudi and uh, bandipur so on our way uh, we took a stop at uh, the sunflower fields and everyone else was having those big lenses and all they were moving around photographing prinia on the sunflower uh, taylor bird on the sunflower so I, i i i was sitting there in the car and i wanted i, I was thinking like uh, how can how can i make a difference uh, what can i uh, click uh, in a different way and i saw a lot of uh, bees uh, flying all over the place i was having a 50 mm and uh, i'm an icon user and i was having this 50 mm lens for trade lens and i tried to capture the bee and the sunflower together some kind of abstract things it it it, it was not perfect but still it it it, it satisfied my <laughs> my my search for a different perspective ever since i used to uh, try and replicate that particular frame of the flower and bee with the habitat around so this was in my mind i had tried uh, recreating that shot in my garden in some other forest wherever i have been to and in 2018 when 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 the kurni bloomed uh, i went to this place in top station uh, and like just to see the kurni yeah yeah munar 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 okay yeah it, the, that was one patch which was outside the protected area which was accessible to everyone and we went there uh, near that yellow petty cloud farm property we were stayed there and we went 
uh, we took a walk in the morning to the kurunyi uh, area uh, and 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 again uh, the kurunyi was there then that breathtaking landscape was there i took some shots and then i was like sitting and i was thinking like what to do uh, how, how how to make a different image is there any possibility and that's when i saw like the sun was slowly rising up and bees started coming i was having this uh, lens uh, called lavoa uh, which is in a 15 mm wide angle macro lens so uh, like during that time i i i started having this interest of uh, clicking animals with its habitat animals again uh, when i say animals it's mostly like mostly. the macro animals uh, amphibians and reptiles and i had this lens with me it was completely manual it's 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 a totally different piece different difficult piece of equipment to use the aperture is manual the focus is manual and whenever we are shooting an animal it has to be at least this close to the subject if this is the lens and the animal has to be this close so if i want to click a bee i have to be as close as uh, the bee itself and like the bee has to come to the flower and everything so i tried couple of them it was not the focus was not easy it, since it's manual focus you can't do it that fast so i started pre focusing and i pre planned an image the sun was coming up and then i realized okay like if i get a bee between the sun and the flower that would be great uh i actually i wanted to feel some flash but i was not having a flash also but with that limited uh uh, uh, uh facilities or with that limited <laughs> things that i had i finally managed to click some 20 to 30 pictures with the bee closer in the frame showing like a bee in like real life coming to the flower and and the rising sun also so yeah I, that, that's how it was made uh, i'm i'm still trying to better that image without the kurni of course trying with some other flies and all so now i am actually trying to fill some more light in it if if i had fill some light if i had used the flash on that bee that that image would have become much more better is what i what i believe so yeah i'm experimenting now also any any uh, memory that you cherish as a photographer and as a herpetologist any memory in you know, during your field trips or anything that you cherish or unforgettable in terms of the risk attached to it anything like that uh i i i mean i mean uh, like everything everything in the forest is uh attached to risk cherished, yeah attached to risk <laughs> i i i wouldn't say risk because like like all all our seniors say if we respect the forest and if we if we follow those guidelines if we respect the forest and if we if we are careful of the forest like nothing will happen like nothing nothing is a risk because i had bumped into elephants i had bumped into tigers almost all the time they have left us they just went away they, they didn't bother us at all and i believe it is because we gave them that respect or we gave them that space there are times e- e- even uh, with all these precautions like accidents can happen we can uh, really predict all those things we are always careful in the field but yeah like one of one of those uh, moments that i cherish is the is the, is the um, episode which i had with a slot bear in uh, pepara wildlife sanctuary uh, so i had been working in that particular landscape for for around like one year and we had been seeing this bear all along the grasslands far away like couple of times we saw it like it was me and my field assistant and antoni muthu we were together uh, in that forest patch and we see, we used to see see him very often it's a, it was a male bear a uh, huge bear we we used to see him uh, on top of the grassland and all one fine morning uh, muthu woke me up and he was like he he called that bear ashan Uh, because he used to see 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 that bear very often he said like sandeep sandeep uh, ashan is here so i woke up and i saw him in the grassland like which was not as far as it used to be so i took my camera and lens i started walking towards it slowly uh, it couldn't see us because there was a small uh, ridge in front of us and it was on the other grassland and we went there we reached the grassland and the bear was not there so i was so sad because that was like a wonderful moment and wonderful opportunity and i i couldn't get a nice picture uh, 
Uh, I was so sad, but at the moment, like uh, th- that's where I believe in all these people who are in the forest, who are always in the forest. So he said, "Don't worry, don't worry. He'll come back uh, in ten uh, twenty minutes through that route." He said, "I, I said, don't bluff. Uh, like, what are you saying? It's a it's a wild animal. You can't predict it." Uh, I started uh, making fun of him, but to my surprise, it came by that way. So <laughs> that's that's their uh, that's their skill. So I so he said that. like not to lose an opportunity i said okay fine i'll go and wait but uh, let's see uh, i'm saying that it's not going to come and he said it's it will definitely come i went there and i start uh, started waiting uh, on the road it's like a walkable path small small path and uh, there was a rock I, i i sat in the concealment of that rock and i had but a tripod and i was looking through the uh, camera and after say like 15 16 minutes the guy started coming walking straight towards us i was so amazed i was like looking back at anthony and like he was like uh, i told you na i told you na he come <laughs> he was giving that pay i was looking through the uh, we find that i was clicking and clicking and at some point i realized okay it's out of focus it was a 300 mm lens and it became out of focus that's when i realized okay the animal is too close then i got scared because i have i have read and i know stories about sloth bears and attacks from sloth bears when you are alone in the forest uh, mutu is like 20 meters behind me he stayed there not that just not to disturb the animal then i stood up when i stood up the animal also got alerted it also stood up it looked at me i was thinking now it's going to run and i turned back and i started running <laughs> but the animal stood there it was not really scared it was just checking out what is happening then it slowly went back and went into the grassland and that day uh, it was a grassland behind my camp and the animal was there till evening like foraging in the grassland like digging up moving here like lying on his back it really relaxing it was really nice it was it was one amazing uh, moment in in the wild that i cherish all the time unfortunately the flood uh, took away uh, the hard drives uh, that had all the oh, images oh. uh i had like a whole series of images fortunately uh because i had sent that image to kudu magazine uh, it, it came as a cover in kudu magazine at the same time it also came as a cover in sanctuary so since i had sent those images to print to those magazine i have those like four or five shots which is very uh, exclusive otherwise i lost all the uh, high resolution files in the flood okay uh, uh now in our channel only green we talk about uh, making this world a greener place for our future generations and what will be your message to our viewers about being mindful about nature and environment uh, uh i i i i mean like uh, I, i would like to pitch in the same idea that we had been uh, trying out with these amphibians and reptiles to create as much as awareness uh, among the general public is, uh, is 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 key towards the conservation is key towards like making the uh, planet a greener keep your eyes open uh, watch uh, things that are happening around and be compassionate okay thanks a lot sandeep thanks a lot for being with us uh, uh, that was a really interesting session for almost 30 35 minutes uh, look forward to more of interactions with you and wishing you all the very best for your future research works and other activities especially the photography part of it because you seem to be very very passionate about it all the best thank you Thank you thank you very much everyone for this platform I'm really honored to be here to have a chat with you thank you thank you thanks a lot